Okay, so we will uh, continue working through uh, chapter three, which uh, covers random variables and the uh, binomial distribution, okay? And so section um, 3.4 covers what, what they call, um, I don't know, density graphs, okay, density curves. And, uh, and section 3.5 c covers random variables. All right. And I think it makes sense to uh, first talk about random variables before we get into uh, density curves, OK? And so a random variable is the outcome to a random trial. Um, where, and the outcome is recorded as a number, okay? The outcome to a random trial, and the outcome is a number. All right, and so, um, you know, we have all sorts of examples. The example could be um, flip a coin. Okay, and heads equals one, tails equals zero. Okay, and if you record your outcomes this way as ones and zeros, it qualifies as a random variable. Okay, or it could be roll a die and uh, and you know record the face that it lands on. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Or, you know, it could be roll two dice and record the sum of the faces. Okay, and so your your possible outcomes are 2 to 12. Uh, um, other outcomes, it could just be, you know, select a person at random. And record this person's height. Or select a person at random and record, you know, any other numeric variable. You know, record weight or IQ or whatever it might be. So any any numeric variable. All right? And so and and all of these involve some kind of random process, whether it's the random selection of a person or rolling a die or flipping a coin, some random thing and the outcome is recorded as a number, okay? Or, I mean, it might naturally be a number. The outcome is a number, okay? And so we could keep track of all of these outcomes, all right? And so, you know, if we're looking at a continuous variable, okay, so if um, the numeric variable is continuous, uh, we might talk about density curves, okay? So if our uh, random variable is continuous, um, we can create density curves, OK? And so what we could do is we could record something like Let's say we wanted to do, um, you know, pick a person at random. And measure the height. OK. 
okay? And it'll be very similar to, uh, you know, you could kind of think of the, uh, the density curve that we would build up would look very much like a histogram, right? So you can imagine just gathering, you know, like a thousand people and, and met recording their heights, okay? Um, and so it's, it's very similar to that, okay? Um, but because, uh, you know, this is supposed to be kind of this theoretic uh, notion of height and whatnot, uh, I'm just gonna kind of draw a, a smooth curve and I'm gonna and I don't know if it will actually look like this, but this is um, this is what we have. Okay, why do um, why am I getting a small dip here, or why did I choose to put a little dip there? Uh, not a category. This is a numeric variable. We're measuring the height. the The notion being, um, on average men are taller than women and so you know I don't know if this is if, if it's really bimodal or not there's there's been some debate as to whether height is bimodal but um, you know on average men are taller than women um, and and there might be um, you know a small dip at uh, at the height of that's you know kind of in between the height of men and women so um, so you know the average female in the United States is probably around 5'4", 5'5", the average male is somewhere around 5'9", 5'10", and so you know halfway in between there something around 5'7", and 5'7", might ever be slightly less common than the typical male height of 5'9", 5'10", and the typical female height of 5'4", 5'5", maybe 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 we have just as many people five seven. Who knows? Okay, um, but you know this is this is what we have, and what we could do though is we could kind of split this up, and we can or um, we could try quote painting this, and we can say the entire area is equal to one hundred percent. Okay, so I could paint this and say um, what's going on here um, you know I could say the entire area that we have underneath this thing is a hundred percent okay but we can also um, you know we can draw chunks like vertical bars, and uh, and then this could, you know, this half maybe is 50%. I don't know if this is actually 50%. And and we can also kind of just draw different chunks, and, you know, I don't know, this might be 15%, and this is 35%, or something like that. We could we could split it up, and, uh, and if I say this is uh, 5 foot 7, and this is... Uh, Five foot ten, so seventy inches. We could ask, you know, what percentage of people are between seventy inches and sixty-seven inches, and our answer would be, according to this graph, fifteen percent. Okay. And that, and that's really that's it for density curves. Okay. Uh, I think it's concept simple, straightforward enough. Well, it it will come back to us next week where density curves play a very huge role uh, when dealing with uh, the normal distribution. Okay, So we'll see uh, the normal distribution next week, and, uh, and density curves will play a, play a big role in there. OK, so we're going to continue our discussion on random variables. So again, random variables. These are outcomes to random trials, and the outcomes are recorded as numbers, OK? And we could have continuous random variables and discrete random variables. Continuous random variables, the calculations for those would involve calculus. And um, it's, it's actually very, you know, it's, 
it's the parallel thing that we do, but um, calculus is not a prerequisite for this class, so we're not going to do any calculations for continuous random variables. So we're um, in our class, we're only going to deal with these calculations of the mean and variance, or mean and standard deviation, for discrete random variables. Okay, so. Um, um, so we can find the mean and standard deviation of discrete random variables, okay? Okay, and so um, let's we'll, um, just make a silly example of something, all right? Um, so I'm going to, um, so this is an example, and uh, I don't know, okay. So the, the book has this, but I'm going to change up the numbers, okay? And so what we're doing is we're looking at uh, some kind of fish. This is my uh, beautiful fish diagram, okay? And, uh, and apparently if you chop the fish up or cut open the fish, you can count how many um, vertebrae are in the fish, okay? So, um, and apparently um, this species of fish can either have 20 vertebrae, 21 vertebrae, 22, or 23 vertebrae. Okay, and uh, and we'll talk about the percent and uh, and so the you know the book has this, but I'm just changing up the numbers. Okay, so I'm I'm making up different numbers. All right, and so we'll say that um, you know a lot of fish. Maybe the most common number of vertebrae is 20 vertebrae, okay? And, or, uh, and we'll say 45% of fish have 20 vertebrae, 30% of fish have 21 vertebrae, 20% of fish have 22 vertebrae, and 5% of fish have 23 vertebrae, okay? So, um, and you know, and we'll say, you know, no fish have 19 vertebrae, no fish have 25 vertebrae or anything like that, okay? So these are the only, the only types of fish that we can get, okay? And this could be treated as a random variable as, you know, this is the pool of fish that are out there, and we're gonna pick a fish at random and we're gonna count how many vertebrae it has, okay? So this is, you know, we, we pick a fish at random, we count the number of vertebrae. Okay, And we could ask, you know, if we did this in the long run, what is the average number of vertebrae that we would see, okay? What is the average number of vertebrae that we would see in the long run. Okay, And so this concept of the average of a random variable, average or mean of a random variable, This is known as the expected value. Okay? And our random variable we can say is y or x, whatever we want to say. And so we would say the expected value, and we write this this way, the expected value of the random variable y. This is the expected value of 
of the random variable y. Okay, e of y. Um, we can also use this symbol. This is the Greek letter mu. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to look kind of like a U with a long bar in the front, or the Greek letter for M, okay, kind of representing the mean, okay. And the formula for the expected value of Y is equal to the sum of Y times the probability of getting that particular value of Y. All right, so I'm going to write, say, do not, to get the mean, do not, do not do 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus 23 divided by 4. This will not give you the mean. This will give you... 21.5, and that is not our mean. 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus 23 divided by 4, 21.5. Do not do this. This is wrong. Okay. You have to uh, follow this. So we say the expected value of y, or our mean of y, is equal to the sum of y times the probability of y. Okay? So our vertebrae, these are the outcomes. The outcomes we label as lowercase y. And over here, we would turn these into percentages, and these would be the probability that y takes on each of these values. All right. So we say, OK, we could get 20 vertebrae. And what is the probability that we get 20 vertebrae? That happens with probability. 0.45. I could also get 21 vertebrae. That happens with probability 0.3. I could get 22 vertebrae. That happens with probability 0.2. And I could get 23 vertebrae. And that happens with probability 0 0.05. Okay. And so my answer is going to be 20 times 0.45 plus 21 times 0.3 plus 22 times 0.2 plus 23 times 0 0.05. And so my expected value is 20.85. And I hope that makes sense, because if we look at the uh, kind of the pool of fish that we have, it seems like much more fish have either 20 or 21 vertebrae, OK? And so in the long run, if I keep picking these fish at random, and I took the average of the number of vertebrae that we see, it should be on the lower end rather than, um, than if we, uh, each of these things were weighted equally, OK? So you can kind of think of this as like the weighted mean of our values. So that is the mean of a random variable. OK. Can I uh, continue on here? OK. Um, we could also ask, uh, you know, what is the standard deviation of these numbers? So you know, in the long run, if I keep taking fish, again, I could amass a whole bunch of different uh, values recorded, what is going to be the standard deviation of all of these numbers that I get? OK, and that, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the next thing, OK? OK, so the standard deviation um, is 
we use the uh, symbol sigma there, okay? And we call the uh, variance sigma squared, or we say this is the variance of y. And so uh, the variance of y will be given by this formula, and to get the standard deviation, all we do is we take the square root, okay? So the variance is we take the difference between each value y from the mean. So we take the difference from y from the mean, and we square that difference, okay? So this is kind of reminiscent of the, form, um, the concept of variance for a set of numbers, right? The variance for a set of numbers we said was um, the quote-unquote average squared distance from the mean. So we see that here, the distance from the mean, y minus mu squared, that's the squared distance from the mean. And then we're going to, instead of just adding them up and dividing to get the average, we're going to multiply this by the uh, probability of getting each of these values. So this is, it's still very much, you can think of it as the, quote, average squared distance from the mean, except the way we're calculating the average is not by adding up and dividing. It's the way we calculated the average for the mean of a random variable, which is we take each thing and we weight it by the probability of getting that outcome. Okay, so let me just uh, flip to the previous slide and copy this table. Okay, and so um, what we would do is uh, from the previous, we got the mean to be equal to 20.85. So you have to calculate this first, okay? And then we would go through and we would take the distance from the mean squared and, and weight it. So our, our variance, sigma squared, is going to be each value 20 minus the mean. So we take that difference squared and we multiply by the probability of getting that value, 0.45. So 21 minus, uh, whoops, 20.85 20, 20 times uh, probability of 0.3 plus 22 minus 20.85 squared times the probability of 0 0.2 plus 23 minus 20.85 times the probability of 0 0.05. Okay, so, uh, you know, we can see this getting, you know, quite cumbersome. You know, if we had a, if the number of vertebrae on the fish, you know, had 10 different possible outcomes, then uh, we could see, you know, we, we wouldn't really want to do this by hand. I don't even really want to do it by hand, uh, and we only have four answers here. But, um, but here, so I can just, um, you know, depending on your calculator, you might be able to type this all in uh, one go. So I got 20 minus 20.85 squared times 0.45 plus 21 minus 20.85. So someone can try doing this on their calculator to verify the, uh, the work I'm getting. I get 0 0.8275. Can anyone verify that? Yes. That's what you also got? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. And then so I would then take the square root. Of this value. And get 0.9097. And this is my, then the standard deviation 
of my uh, random variable. And so this gives us a sense of kind of the, the mean and spread, or the center and spread, of a random variable, which, um, you know, you, you can kind of just, for now, treat the, uh, the distribution of a random variable as, as a histogram, okay? But you have to keep in mind this is more, on, from a theoretical standpoint, where this thing represents your population and you are drawing individuals at random from the population there. Okay. Is this feeling okay? It's just kind of a little bit of plugging, plugging and chugging along. Okay. All right, and, uh, and the last topic that we're going to cover today is the binomial uh, distribution, okay? So there is a special case of a random variable known as the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution is a, a special random variable, okay? Or some, I guess, some random variables, you know, follow certain patterns. Or arise from certain situations, okay? And a, you know, a special one of these is the binomial. Okay, the binomial random variable arises when we have a situation of repeatedly trying or repeated, you know, repeating these random trials of um, kind of these, these events that have two outcomes, okay? So, um, so we have a binomial. So one is we do repeated trials of a random event, or I guess random quote experiment. Just a you know a random trial really. Okay, we, we repeat those. Okay. Each trial is independent of the others. Okay, which um, which means that each trial will have the same probability of success. Uh, and each trial only has two possible outcomes. And these are arbitrarily labeled success and failure, okay? You know, we normally associate success with positive things, like good things in life, and failures as bad things in life. But these are just, they're arbitrary labels. And so, um, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, when we say something is a quote success, it's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It could be a very bad thing. But, um, but they're just labeled as success or failure. Okay? And we are interested in, 
And I guess this could be 4 or not. Okay. We are interested in... in the probability of a certain number of successes. Okay. So these are the conditions for when we have a binomial random variable. And so I will, uh, I will kind of list off some simple examples, okay? Okay, so one example is, you know, <clears throat> maybe our, our simplest case will be we flip a coin 10 times. Okay, each flip has probability equal to 0.5 of landing heads. What is the probability that the coin lands heads exactly five times out of ten? Out of ten flips. Okay, so that's that's one um, scenario. All right. Um, I'm just totally making up uh, these situations. Okay, we'll say a couple decides to have three children. Okay, and we'll just say. Um, genetically for this couple there is a 0.52% chance 0.52 probability of having a girl with each pregnancy Just, I don't know, making this stuff up, okay? And then we'll say, what is the probability um, that they have at least one girl, one girl out of the three kids? Um... Can we see how these situations are? We are doing repeated trials, okay? And you know, you know, this these may not be true, but uh, okay. Each when we're going to say each trial is independent of the other trials, okay? And every trial, so every trial has the same probability of a quote success, whatever, however we have labeled what a success is. And each trial has only two possible outcomes: either a, a quote success or a quote failure, whether whatever the outcome is, okay? Uh, you know, another one, maybe, uh, I don't know if you guys watch uh, basketball or not, but I like basketball, and so we'll say, um, and this may not be an accurate representation, but we can say, um, you know, a player um, makes a free throw uh, we'll say 86% of the time. Okay, and we're going to say uh, um, the, the player um, takes seven free throws in a game. What is the probability? He makes six out of seven. 
makes, we'll say, uh, at least 6 out of 7. Okay? That's what we, uh, these are different situations here. Okay. Are, are we okay with seeing that these are uh, examples of binomial variable situations? Okay, so let's, uh, let's try the math behind a, for a binomial random variable, okay? So we're going to do, um, I will do a very simple example, okay? So, you know, a simple example um, with some kind of, you know, a biased coin. And there's argument of whether or not a biased coin actually exists, but we will say uh, we have one, okay? And so we will say this coin, the probability that it lands heads is 0.7, okay? And I'm going to flip the coin three times. Uh, well, here, let's, uh, I, three, okay, yeah, we'll do three times. And we want to know what is the probability of getting um, two heads. Okay. So every time we do a binomial problem, there are, we need to identify three things, okay? N is the number of trials. P is probability of quote, success for each trial. And J is the number of successes we are interested in. Okay, so for our problem, how many trials am I doing? Three. I'm flipping the coin three times. Okay, what is the probability of getting a success each time I flip the coin? 0. 0.7. And how many successes am I interested in? Two. Okay, so we could, uh, we could list this out, okay? We could um, draw a probability tree. All right, and we can say heads or tails. The first flip could be heads or tails. And what's the probability that I get heads? 0.7. Probability that I get tails is 0.3. Okay, on the next flip, I can get heads or tails. I can get heads or tails. And this happens with 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. 0 0.7, 0 0.3. And then I can also, and for the third flip, I can get heads or tails, heads, tails, and these all are 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, so on and so forth. Okay. All right, and then so we say, well, how many ways can I get two heads, okay? And so I'm gonna kinda highlight these paths. I can go heads, heads, tails. Or I can go heads, tails, heads. Or I can get tails, heads, heads. So these are the, the three paths where I could get two heads out of three flips, right? So I can have heads, heads, tails. Heads, tails, heads, and tails, heads, heads. Is that okay? Okay. What is the probability that I get heads, heads, tails? 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3. Heads, tails, heads is 0 0.7 times 0.3 times 0.7. 
and then tails heads heads would be 0.3 times 0.7 times 0.7, right? So I can follow these paths and I'd see 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Okay? So what do we notice? All of these, you know, and then I, I would then add these up, right? Okay. But all of them all have two heads and one tail, right? And so each each um, each outcome has the same probability. Each outcome has the same probability, which is 0.7 squared times 0.3 to the 1 power, really. Okay. And how many possible outcomes do I have? I have three of these, so I'm going to just multiply this thing by 3. Okay? So if I were to ask you um, you know, what's the probability of getting one head rather than two heads? So the answer to this would be 3 times 0.7 squared times 0.3. Um, if I came over here and I said what's the probability of getting one head What would you say? Yeah, it would be there's going to be three ways, and it's going to each one is going to have one head of 0.7, but and they're going to have two tails of 0.3 squared. Can we see that? Okay. And I know there's three ways. I mean, I could count them up, but. I mean, it just makes sense that I could just reverse the heads and the tails. And I would have three different ways of getting one head and two tails. Okay? And so the answer we have for this situation would be this. Is that okay? All right. And so this leads us to kind of our generalized formula for a binomial random variable. Okay, so we'll say uh, for a binomial random variable, with n trials, probability of success equal to p, okay, then the probability of getting j successes will be, okay, and we will write the probability that our random variable y is equal to j, okay, is equal. And so I'll, I'll do the part that you're familiar with, which is the probability of a success, which was, you know, the coin has to land heads with probability of 0.7. How many of successes do we need? We need j of them. Okay? So we're going to say p to the j times, okay, what's the probability that the coin doesn't land heads? Or what's the probability of getting a failure then? 1 minus p, right? Okay. And if I have a total number of n trials, how many failures am I going to have? So, so on the previous page, we said you know we're flipping it three times, so we would have two heads and one tail, right? Okay. Or if I want one head, how many tails do I have? I have two. So. If I'm going to have j successes and a total of n trials, how many failures am I going to have? n minus j, right? And so the only thing we're missing is the number of ways, you know, that number in the previous page we had, you know, there were three possible ways to get 
two heads and one tail. All right. So this, I'm going to just kind of write here. This is called n j. This is this is called n choose j. It can also be written this way, n c j. Okay. And this is equal to the number of ways or the number of combinations of having j successes in n trials. Okay. All right, and the uh, and the formula for n choose j is equal to uh, n factorial over j factorial times n minus j factorial. Now, you don't have to worry about this because our calculator does this for us. <laughs> um, well, if you have a calculator that does it, I guess I should qualify that. Um, so, you know, you could imagine, uh, you know, if we if we were to flip the coin five times. And I said, um, you know, five flips, and I want two heads. Okay. Well, this would be equal to five choose two, and this would be five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. Okay. Now, in our calculator, see my thing. If if you have a ca one of these Casio calculators, I've got a NCR button over the division sign. Now you might have it. If you got a TI under the probability, or uh, you, you might have a probability button somewhere in your calculator, or a math button with a probability menu somewhere in your calculator. Um, so on my calculator, I hit five and I hit shift, divide key, and that pulls up the C. And I would do five, choose two, and it says, oh, there's ten ways you could uh, get two flips, two heads out of five flips. Okay, on your uh, depending on your calculator, you might have to hit like a math or probability button. Okay, and then in the menu, you probably can navigate to something called NCR. And you'd probably do type something like um, 5 NCR 2. And when you hit equals, it should say 10. Does that, does that work? OK, and then um, what would happen if I did 5 choose 3? 5 choose 3 is also equal to 10. OK? And so this concept of choose, you can think of it this way, all right? Um, imagine, you know, there's five of you hanging out together, OK? And then you, you're like, oh, man. I could really use some, I don't know, Taco Bell or whatever, OK? And then you say, OK, well, we're going to send you to, the, uh, to Taco Bell to get some food. And, uh, but um, only two people can fit in the car, all right? So how many ways can you pick two people to go to Taco Bell? Well, you have five people, and you're choosing two of them, OK? So you're choosing two. And there's 10 possible combinations to send two people to Taco Bell to get your food. Choosing two people to go is also the exact same as choosing three people to stay behind. Okay, So five choose two will give you 10. Five choose three will also give you 10, because choosing two to go is the same as choosing three to stay home. Okay, So that's what we've got going on here. And, uh, and that's basically how many ways can you say, you know, out of five flips, we're gonna, we have to, quote, choose two of them to be successes. How many combinations are there? That's n choose j. OK? Do we feel comfortable with this? All right, so let's, uh, let's try a little example here. OK? And let's, uh, let's do our um, basketball example. So we'll say, um, you know, a player uh, will make uh, and I forgot, we'll say 86% of his free throws. OK. OK, he takes seven free throws in a game. 
Okay, and we will assume, we assume each free throw is independent of the other. And this is, uh, that's a debated um, topic, but you know, for simplicity, we'll, we're going to assume each throw is independent. Okay, and we're going to ask, what is the probability he makes at least six out of the seven shots? Um, all right, I'll give you guys a, a few minutes to uh, figure this out. Um, you have two J's to, uh, to worry about in this, uh, in this example, okay? So if you're uh, watching on YouTube, again, I'm going to pause the, uh, the video um, to, uh, to work through this. Okay. All right, so uh, this is our formula. This is the probability that our random variable takes on a certain value, in our case, j. All right. So when it says, what's the probability that he makes six out of at least, I'm sorry, at least six out of the seven shots, OK? At least six out of the seven means, you know, we want to know what is the probability that uh, he makes six shots or he makes seven shots. Is that okay? So making at least six is the outcome that you get either six or seven. I mean, you can't have any more than that. I mean, at least six means six or more, but if you're only taking seven shots, you can't make any more than that. Okay? Um, and so, you know, technically this is, you know, you know, what's the probability of six or seven so this is going to be equal to the probability of 6 plus the probability of 7. Is there any overlap that I have to worry about? Do I have to worry about probability of 6 and 7? No, because there's no situation where he can have simultaneously made 6 out of the 7 shots and 7 out of the 7 shots. That's, that's just not a possibility. So I don't have to worry about any out overlap. Okay. So all I have to do is figure out probability of 6 and add probability of 7, OK? So I don't have to worry about any overlap to subtract. OK, so let's, we'll, we'll just tackle each of these one at a time. So we'll say, what's the probability of getting 6? So, or this is kind of shorthand for saying the probability that our outcome is equal to 6. So in this case, our j is 6, OK? So in our problem, maybe I'll, I'll label these, OK? Um, he, eighty-six percent of his free throws, so that means p is equal to 0.86. He makes. Uh, he's going to take seven free throws in a game, so our n is equal to seven. And in our case, the j is equal to six. All right, for this for this problem. Okay. So, how many ways can he? make six shots out of seven, that's going to be given by seven choose six, OK? Seven choose six. We want successes. So that's going to be 0.86. And how many times does he have to succeed? He needs to succeed six times, OK? So if he's going to have six free throws made, that means he must succeed six times, and he must fail how many times? One time. The probability of a failure is going to be 1 minus 0.86 or 0.14, and he must fail one time if he's going to make six out of the seven shots. Is that okay? Okay, and so when I multiply this out, I get, uh, you know, seven choose six times 0.86 raised to the 6 power times 0 0.14. I could raise it to the 1 power, but I don't need to. OK, and that's going to be 0 0.39675. OK, 39647588 or whatever. OK. 
So that's the probability of getting 6. The probability of getting 7 uses the same things. p is 0.86, j is now 7. Okay, so p is 0.86, n is still 7, and j is now 7. Okay, and so this is going to be 7 choose 7 times 0.86 raised to the seventh power <coughs> times 0.14 raised to the zero. That means how many times must he succeed? He must succeed seven times. How many times must he fail? He must fail zero times. Okay, And so this is going to be 7 choose 7. Anytime you have cho a number choose itself, it's always going to be 1. Okay. If you have seven friends and you need to send all seven to the store, there's only one way you can have that. So, so it's, this is just going to be 1, 0.86 raised to the 7, okay? And 0.14 raised to the 0 is also um, 1. So this gives me 0.3479, okay? And so our answer here, probability of 6 or 7, will equal 0 0.3965 plus 0 0.3479. So 0 0.3965 plus 0 0.3479, and I get 0 0.744. Okay. How does that feel? That feels okay? Good. Okay, and so uh, the last, the last thing is, you know, we could, we might want to calculate the mean and standard deviation for a binomial random variable. Okay, now for this, this thing, we could talk about, you know, the the basketball player. Okay. Now, if he if he takes seven shots, seven free throws. What are the uh, possible outcomes that he could have? The outcomes are he could make all seven shots, he could make six shots, he could make five, four, three, two, one, and it's also possible that he misses all seven, right? Okay, so these are the possible outcomes, and we could find the probability of each outcome probability that y is equal to j, right? And from our previous slide, uh, we know that the probability of 6 is 0.3965, and the probability of 7 is 0.3479. Okay, so this is 0.3965, and this is 0.3479. And we could go through the math and calculate all of these other values. It would be um, rather tedious for us to do but we could do that, okay? And once we have this table of all the outcomes and their respective probabilities, we could apply our earlier formulas to calculate the mean and standard deviation. Does that kind of make sense? Now, that would be a long process, okay, to get our mean and standard deviation, but it would be one way to do it, okay? So, you know, we could, I could say, you know, we could, um, calculate each of these probabilities. Okay, and then we could then use, you know, the expected value of y is equal to um, y times the probability of y equal y. So, you know, our, our earlier uh, random variable formulas and uh, the variance of y okay but this would be tedious Uh, and so we have a few shortcuts, okay? So we have shortcut 
for um, for binomial variables. The mean, the expected value of y, which is our mu, is equal to n times p. And I, and I think that makes intuitive sense, that you know, if you flip a coin 100 times, and, uh, and the probability of heads is 0.5, you're expecting 100 times 0.5, you're expecting 50, around 50 heads. Okay, the uh, standard deviation, okay, our sigma is equal to the square root, this one not as intuitive sense, um, but it can be proven that this is the case. It's n times p times 1 minus p, okay? So these are shortcuts for getting the mean and standard deviation of our binomial random variables. So, you know, let's just try this out. When we had n equal to 7 and p equal to 0.86, our, our basketball example, the number of, the expected number of baskets that uh, we can uh, expect would be 7 times 0.86. We can expect an average of 6.02 baskets made. And the standard deviation will be 7 times 0.86 times 0.14. We can expect a standard deviation, or we have a standard deviation of 0 0.918. Okay, so these are our uh, mean and standard deviation of a binomial random variable there. Okay, uh, we'll end there. Uh, you've got some homework problems to uh, kind of go over these concepts and, and things. Uh, we have a quiz next week, so uh, please arrive uh, uh, on time for class. And, uh, and I have details on uh, you know, what kind of topics you can expect on the quiz uh, posted on the, uh, the course webpage. Okay, so we'll see you guys next week. Uh, have a good week.